Hey guys, welcome back. So right now we are still trying to get the boat ready for planking. There's a lot to do before we can actually start hanging planks. And so the work this week isn't sort of concentrated on one particular job, but we're all doing different bits and pieces to get further towards that goal. Pat is going to be working with Pete Langley down at the foundry doing some casting. Clark is going to be grinding and finishing those floors. Pete is going to be working on the rabbit and fairing the outside of the frames. And I'm hoping to do the final install on the transom planks, bed them down, bolt them in and finish them up. Okay, now that I've got all the transom planks off, I'm gonna plug up a few more holes and I'm gonna fasten them back to the boat, but permanently. I need to decide how I'm gonna fasten them to the stern post. The screws I had them before were just temporary. And originally they used big 5 8 inch bronze bolts through the stern post. They seem bigger than necessary to me, but having looked through my stock here, I've actually got the right amount of 5 8 inch rod. So rather than downsizing it, I'm actually just going to remake them at the same size as they were before. They'll be way stronger than they need to be for this job, but there's nothing wrong with that. And it's actually quite nice to do it in the same way as they did it originally. You never know, they may have known something that I don't. So I'm gonna hammer the heads onto the bolts by hand, cut the threads into them with the threading machine, and they will fasten the transom to the stern post. At the fashion pieces, there will just be screws fastening it, but that should be plenty strong enough in that area, especially as eventually there's also gonna be screws coming from the other direction, from the ends of the planks, into the end grain of the transom. A few people were concerned that the end grain of the transom might be exposed and therefore vulnerable, but actually it won't be, it'll be completely covered up by the ends of the planks. transom rests against the fashion pieces which are kind of like frames but not plumb and the stern post on the center line of the boat. I'm going to prime the fashion pieces and the stern post with a red lead primer which is a rock preventative and then I'm going to bed the planks down on a mix of dolphinite which is just a standard bedding compound and pine tar which helps the bedding compound stay softer for longer and also helps prevent rot a little bit. The splines that go in between the planks are also going to be primed with red lead primer. This is really important because they are soft and not as rot resistant as the teak but this primer is really powerful stuff and it will stop any rot from starting to grow on the surface of that timber which is unlikely anyway as rot needs fresh water and air to grow and hopefully there should be neither of those things near the splines. Now to make sure that those seams are definitely watertight I'm going to use an old trick which is to create a depressed line along the edge of the planks by pushing in the grain of the timber. With a small depression on the edges of both planks, that'll create a very small hollow into which I'm gonna place a very thin strand of corking cotton. Now the idea is that because that hollow has been made by pressing the grain in rather than cutting it away, that grain is actually going to expand back to where it was in time, especially if it gets wet. And so as it expands back, it's gonna really compress and crush that corking cotton. So it's creating a really tight seam with the cotton in there, which will also expand if it gets wet. But from the outside, it looks like a closed seam. There's no corking bevel or corking seam there on the planks. And that should mean that there's gonna be no chance that water's gonna be getting through the transom, especially with those splines as well, which are also very tight in their slots. And they also add a lot of strength to those joints, especially in the areas between the framing of the transom.
Hey, Pete. What are you doing? Ah, uh, what am I doing? What are you doing? <laughs> so the face of this rabbit changes with the swell of the keel and, and the angle of the frames down the whole length of the bow. And so uh, it's kind of vertical up, up front at the forefoot, bellies out and, and angles outward and then straightens back up uh, in the stern uh, all along the deadwood. Pretty much to get this correct, there's already an established line, um, the rabbit line. So hung a batten up on that line. And uh, the planking here, the garbage plank, is supposed to come in uh, to this corner at a 90 degree angle. So you make a little planking fid. It is, it's just a square in cross section. It's one and, one and three eighths by one and three eighths, which is the thickness of our planking. And so that uh, goes flat against the back of the rabbit and then ideally you're making this a 90 degree corner so it's just to check that you're deep enough deep enough for what oh i'm sorry that you're deep enough uh for the plank to be flush with the keel <laughs> So what I'm doing here is just using the round end of this small ball peen hammer to depress the grain all the way along the edges of this board on one side of the slot for the spline. I'm doing it on the outside, which is a little bit wider, and it's also the first place that water would go through before it even got to the spline. So I've been working at the Port Townsend Foundry. Started out with a little bit of a learning curve, making sure the sand was packed well enough. When we started, the process was taking us about a day and a half to go from molding up to casting the parts. And now we are up to where we can mold and it's ready to be cast in a day. We stopped going from trying to do it as a two-part mold and so now it's a three-part mold, so we have the drag, a core piece, and the cope. We had a little bit of an issue with uh, getting the sand packed tight enough so that we didn't get any mold swell, which uh, causes the 
the casting to be a little bit bigger than, than it's supposed to be. Uh, but we seem to have resolved that problem and, and we've also upped our speed with the uh, help of a pneumatic ram that helps ram up the sand much faster than doing it by hand. We put about uh, 15 wheelbarrow fulls in the drag part of the cast and then another probably another 15 in the um, in the cope. Thanks a lot Pat, thanks Thank a lot for all the help in the foundry. Oh uh, yeah it's been a great learning experience over there working with Pete. I mean I knew a little bit about casting but I've learned quite a bit. Yeah. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. More grinding. Yeah. Making magic happen. Oh, yeah. I'm using the roughest uh, 
the roughest disc right now. So it's got about four or five more progressions depending on how shiny we want to make it. How pretty do we want to make this one? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I kind of feel like once it's, once it's at a standard where it's good enough, and it's like actually probably not much further to get it shiny. But True. I'm not the one doing it, so. Yeah. I'll keep going, you tell me when to stop. <laughs> and the important thing really is that it get fits. Get fit, yeah. Yeah, I got a fair bit of work to do before it fits just right. Hey Pete, what are you doing? Uh, fairing frames so we can line out for planking. Mm -hmm. So, finished carving most of the rabbit, working my way up. Um, so, run a batten down, um, kind of started up forward, finding lows, finding highs, um, checking the bevels, um, and uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, cool. Sighting it for a fair curve. Mm -hmm. Make sure there's no big flats or humps. So I've got a couple of coats of very thin varnish on the transom. I'm gonna put a couple more on, but I'll just be putting thin coats on. I'm not gonna really be building it up. This is mostly just to protect the wood. But anyway, I'm really pleased with how it looks. The plugs and the graving pieces are all not too obvious, but I think obvious enough that if you look at it, you can see the age of these pieces of wood. And it's just really nice to have a significant part of the original timber of the boat back in place, fastened permanently, part of the boat again. There were a few questions about the transom from before. The timber started out at two inches thick and after all the processing I lost a quarter of an inch so it's now one and three quarters which I feel is plenty strong and thick enough for this application. The planks that I reused are definitely original from when the boat was built. Uh, I can tell 
pretty easily from the way the planks were fastened to it and the holes from the copper sheathing and so on. There are a few questions about the glue I used. I used polyurethane glue. I know some people don't like that type of glue, which is fair enough, but in my experience, I've never had problems with polyurethane. I do know that the joints have got to be really tight and I know a lot of people use it mistakenly for the wrong application and expect it to hold when it's not got a really tight surface to surface connection. In this case, I wasn't too fussed about the glue because these are all non-structural repairs really. The big graving pieces are mostly pretty shallow. The plugs that go all the way through definitely aren't going anywhere. And in the unlikely event that any of this glue fails, any of this stuff starts coming out, I'll just put it back in or glue it with something else or repair it on the way. That's the beauty of a wooden boat. I don't think this glue is a problem at all. But in general, it's good to remember, I think, that you can always go back and, and change stuff. And, you know, unless it's something really critical, like your keel fastenings or something, which you want to make sure you get right, most things will give you a good bit of warning if there's something wrong with them. And the great thing about wooden boats is that it's pretty easy to change stuff out, take bits out, put new bits in, change fastenings, whatever you want. Especially if it's localized, it's pretty easy. If it's bigger, it's still easy, it just takes longer. But boats are never finished. Wooden boats are certainly never finished. There will be things after this boat is launched where I'll realize, oh, I should have done that differently, or I'd like to change that. And that'll happen on the next time I haul the boat out or a few years down the line. The important thing I think is to keep moving forward, keep motivated, and keep working towards the goal of launching a boat. So as you can see, we've got three floors now fully finished up and fitted in the boat. They're just dry fitted, they're not fastened yet. But Clark's done a really good job fitting them to the frames really well and the keel, of course, and got the inside faces of them really nice and fair. And as you can see, very shiny and polished. It feels pretty ridiculous having polished floors in the build of a boat, but it's really not actually very much more work after we get them to the shape that we want and all sanded down and fair, just to put that extra shine onto them. And to be honest, I think that perhaps Clark just can't quite help himself. Clark's actually had to head off to do his normal job for just a few days, so he's not here to defend himself, but he will be back next week to do some more fitting on the rest of the floors. Having them polished does look amazing, even if it's completely absurd. They will tarnish, of course, and they'll end up green, but the very smooth finish could be an advantage against uh, tiny amounts of corrosion. And it also means, of course, if I have a very overzealous deck hand one day, I can send them into the bilge with some polish as if there won't be enough work to do on the rest of the boat. But anyway, I'm really pleased we're gradually getting the hang of this floor casting fitting deal. Pete Langley down at the foundry and Pat are doing a fantastic job casting and Clark's doing a great job fitting. So I'm really looking forward to getting them all in the boat in the next few weeks. But that's all we've got time for right now. So thanks a lot for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise supported the Tally Ho project. It does make a huge difference and it means I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos. So I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.